Hi, today we are talking about retinol, retin-A, retinoids, all of that good stuff. Welcome back to my skincare sage series where I hope to put skincare and some of the mysteries around it kind of into perspective and common terms and make it all understandable. This is a big subject. In anti-aging, retin-A, which is a prescription, so retin-A is a prescription. It comes in several strengths. It comes in several delivery systems, a gel, a cream, one that kind of gets, it penetrates over time. And it is the only proven, FDA approved ingredient prescription by the FDA that says it actually will reverse the damage from, well, from photo aging or for sun damage, or we'll just call it what it is, aging, wrinkles, brown spots, sagging. So it is the only thing that has gone through all the clinical trials, all the years of clinical trials, all the records, all the databases, and yes, at the end of that, the claim can be made, it reverses the sign of aging, and it slows down the sign of aging. Retin-A was originally used for acne, and then as many drugs, they find another purpose for it. And it's been around a very, very long time, uh, and the delivery systems have changed. You know, as I said, some are more emollient, some are a, a gel, but Retin-A is prescription and FDA approved to actually make a difference. I think one of the things that is so, so um, not mysterious, but confusing, is all these words sound the same. You have retin-A, you have retinoic acid, you have tretinoin, you have retinol, retinal, retinal palmitate, retinoids. And then each one of them has different strengths and efficacies. Do I get 2%? Do I get 4%? Do I get 1%? Is the stronger, or 0.05%, is that better than the 0.1%? It's kind of scientific, and most of us kind of just go, ugh, where, where? just tell me once again what to get. So I'm going to try to kind of break this down a little bit and maybe even compare it to dieting. Isn't that a fun subject? Retinoid is like a diet. There's all kinds of diets, but we all know to lose weight, you've got to go on a diet. You have to exercise. That's what they tell us. Retinoids is the big catchphrase. All of these vitamin A derivatives, and by the way, this is in uh, all the retinoids, that whole big bucket of them, come from animal-based vitamin A, not the carrot or the plant-based uh, vitamin A that we think of. So that's just a little interesting tidbit. So retinoids, we're just going to use this as a big bucket, just like we say I'm going on a diet. There's all kinds of diets. Some work fast, some work slow, all kinds. When you put this cream, this retinoid type cream, whether it's an over-the-counter or prescription, what really matters is retinoic acid you want it to react with your skin cells and what reacts with it is retinoic acid. That's what makes the difference. Over-the-counter retinoids, so you have prescription retin-A, sometimes called tretinoin, all these names, but prescription. And then you have over-the-counter. And the over-the-counter ones, when you put them on your face, they have to go through several, what's the word I'm looking, not generations, but gyrations to finally become retinoic acid and affect the cell. And the weaker the over-the-counter product is, sometimes the gentler, it, it, it just takes a lot for it to become retinoic acid, which is why it doesn't work as quickly or as noticeably, because even though you're slapping, slapping it on, if it's retinol palmitate, which is the weakest form, it's already weak. Then it's got to get through all those layers of skin, and it's going, and it's going, and it's getting tired, it's getting tired. And finally, when it gets to the skin cell it needs, just a little, little bit of, to make that retinoic acid. So 
what all these retinoids, the whole bucket of them do, is they actually help skin cell turnover. So we talked about exfoliation. It, it helps that the cells come off faster, which is what was happening when we were younger. It just, it just happened faster. And the other thing that it does is it, it stimulates the production of collagen. It actually says, knock, knock, hey cell, make some collagen. It stimulates it just that way. Now, I'm not going to address the Retin-A and retinols for acne because, they're, again, there are different variations. Some of them will actually slow down oil production. This is an anti-aging series, so I'm, I'm not going to get into the acne side of it. Over-the-counter, most, you're going to look at the ingredient deck and it's going to say retinol, which is great. But how much is in there? They don't tell you if it's 0.05. It doesn't take much. You know, you don't need 10%. 10% you probably burn your face off. But, you know, is it 0.025? Is it 0.001? Is it, what, what, how much is in there? We generally speaking don't know. There are some really great skincare companies online and at some of the more upper end uh, websites and stores that will tell you the percentage and you can go from there. One of the things I really want to talk about today is retinal with an AL ending, which is short for retinaldehyde. This is a superior over-the-counter form of retinoids. I mentioned the weakest was retinal palmitate, which is also the best for sensitive skin. So if you're saying, I just can't use them, try to find a product with retinal palmitate in it. Chances are you can use it. It'll take a really long time to see the effects. I would go so far as to say that, if anything, it'll slow down a little bit the aging process. I'm not sure it's actually going to take away a wrinkle or a brown spot or get rid of a turkey neck, but maybe, because again, I don't know how much is in there. But retinal palmitate um, needs to t turn into, as it goes through the gyrations to finally become retinoic acid, which is really what you want to happen down at your skills, it needs to turn into retinol, and then the retinol will need to turn into retinal or retinaldehyde. And then that will turn into retinoic acid. So you can see that as you're going through these gyrations, the closer you can get to retinoic acid, which is prescription retin-A, faster and easier it is on your skin. Retinaldehyde is one step away from retinoic acid. So it doesn't have to go through so many gyrations. It works very effectively, and for whatever reason, because it's not doing all this crazy stuff, it is usually very well tolerated. There aren't a lot of over-the-counter products with it. I know that Avene, Othermal, Retronol, the R is in there because it's French. It's not yet another word you have to worry about. I believe it comes in 0.05 and 0.1. I am sure there are other products that have Retin and I'll put all of this down below. But if you've been having a problem with prescription Retin-A or a strong retinol, I would say if you can afford it, try the Avene. Uh, that, I would say that's probably a good place to start. Then if you're having problems the other thing is the retinol palmitate. You, you can certainly try that. It is very weak form, but any little bit we can do when it comes to anti-aging is going to be a plus. People will often say, what should I start with? Start really slowly, really slowly. Remember, your skincare, your anti-aging skincare, is for the rest of your life or until you're the point you're going, I'm done, put a fork in me, this girl is done, I don't care what I look like. The important thing with any, any retinoid, whether it's over-the-counter or prescription, is consistency and frequency of use. So you want to use, start out slowly and buffer it. You're going to be doing this for a long time. So if it takes you four months to get up to speed, it takes you four months. 
it's worth the investment. In the beginning, let us say you're going to use a retinol product. Let's say you're going to use a 0.03% retinol product. That's, that's, I think, the lowest retinol in the good, in the good brands. I would start by do, adding it after I moisturize. So I do my whole skin care, my whatever, my peptides, my serums, my moisturizer, my night cream, and then I would put the retinol on top of it. I would do that every third night for a couple of weeks. Then I might continue to do that, but now I might do it every other night for a few weeks. If I'm still doing okay, I might now start to use it as the first uh, cream after cleansing every other night. So maybe two months into this process, you will cleanse, you will put on your retinoid, whatever it is in that bucket, I'm going to say it's a retinol, then you'll put your serums on, etc., etc. And you'll do that every other night. And if that's going well, eventually you're going to go to every night. And if that's going well five or six months from now when you're about ready to buy another bottle or you're ready to buy your third bottle, maybe now you can go up to the 0.06% retinol. And you might have to take a step back. You might have to say, whoa, I think I need to go back to applying this after my moisturizer for a few weeks. Or I might have to step back using this every third night for a few weeks and then every other night. You have to look at this as a very long transition. Some of you will have very tolerant skin and you're going to feel like, I can do this quickly and that's fine. Listen to your skin. Maybe you will never get past the 0.06. I think there's a 0.09, there's a 1%. It is better to use that 0.06 consistently every other night than it is to use the 0.09 once a week. Much better. You want to use it as frequently as you can that is tolerable for you. So if you're flaking and peeling, you step back, step back, step all the way back if you have to. It is much more important to use it consistently and frequently versus once every you know, once a week because it's really irritating. In your first six months of this journey, I would not use any type of chemical or enzyme exfoliator. Just the first six months until you know what your skin is doing. So don't use your glycolic acids, your lactic acids, your BHAs on the same night that you're using your retinoid, whichever retinoid you are using in that bucket. So that's what you need to do is just, that's the only thing I would say avoiding. Once your skin is tolerant, I can use glycolic acid and prescription Retin-A in the same night and not have any issues. My skin does not get irritated from that. If you are going right for the big guns and I want to start with prescription Retin-A, start with the lowest percentage which is 0.025. Do the same thing though. Start by placing it over your moisturizer every third night for a few weeks, then every other night for a few weeks, then finally get to the point where I'm going to cleanse and then immediately put on the Retin-A. And do that every other night, every third night, see how it's going. If you cannot take the 0.025, I would say try the Avene Retinaldehyde or any other product you might be able to find. And if you still can't take that, then try a very weak 0.03 retinol product. It is such a wonderful, wonderful ingredient for anti-aging. There is a synthetic peptide called Matrixyl 3000, and there's a few variations of it. It is, it is almost identical to using a retinoid, whichever one we're talking about. And so there's quite a bit of hope if you're not able to use a retinoid, then you're looking for an ingredient called Matrixyl 3000. I will do another uh, episode on that because it has a lot of very long oglia, pulboglia, pulboglia, peptide number 13 7 7 8 b 
So when you look at an ingredient deck, it may not always say Matrixyl 3000. It may, it may have the actual chemical name. But there is hope. And then, uh, I think those are probably the main things. Oh, no, there is one other thing I wanted to address, this waiting period. Now, I think early on in this series, I said we are in 2016, soon to be 2017. Be careful with what maybe is an old urban legend. And it's hard to know if something is truth or not because, again, delivery systems make things last longer. They help things penetrate deeper. They uh, are okay with certain ingredients being exposed to air or light. The reason you have heard to wait 20 minutes after cleansing your skin to apply a retinoid, particularly prescription retin-A, is because way back when, this, you know, I don't know, was it the 60s this, the FDA approved this? Most everybody was using soap, like literally a bar of soap. Dove, Came, I don't know, whatever was there, but they were using soap. Soap leaves your skin at a horrible pH, and it takes a it takes about 20 minutes if you're using soap soap. It takes about 20 minutes for your skin to get back to its normal everyday pH. When you put a retinoid on a non-normal pH, you have more chance of irritation. It has nothing to do with the efficacy. It will work. It's just that you're going to be more irritated by it. Today, and oh, let me get back. So then this thing called toners came out. And the original reason for toners was that after you cleansed with soap, you brought your face back to regular pH. That's what a toner did. It brought it back to regular pH, and then your face is nice and calm and ready to accept all the skin care. It's, it's, it's in a happy place. Today, we have cleansers that leave your skin at regular pH. The, the minute your face is dry, water affects the pH. But as soon as you're dry, your face is at normal, happy pH. Uh, the, so that's why you don't have to wait the 20 minutes. Uh, that's not a hard and fast rule. Again, it has nothing to do with efficacy. It has to do with irritation. You need to be applying any retinoid to a to your normal pH, and if you are not using a cleanser that leaves your skin at normal pH, then you should probably wait 20 minutes. Some of us just don't have to. Again, how tolerant is your skin? Is it the very weak over-the-counter retinol palmitate? Is it retinol? Is it retinol 0.03, 0.09, 1%? I'm going to try to do another series on this because this can be confusing, but I wanted to clear up the 20 minute rule because boy, that's a long time to wait before you're starting to do all your skin skincare. This is a long process. This is anti-aging. It takes time, patience, patience. You're going to be doing this forever or until, as I said, put a fork in me, I'm done. So take the three, four, five months of gradually getting into it so it doesn't irritate your skin. And it's doing something. It's not as though you're wasting five months. You are doing something. And then uh, think about whether or not you have to wait the 20 minutes. If you know, for instance, I use Purity. I know for a fact Purity by Philosophy leaves my skin at a normal pH. I couldn't tell you about other cleansers, but if it is a soap-free cleanser, chances are it's leaving your face at a normal pH. So um, that's that's about it. And if you can... Unfortunately, they don't talk a lot about retinol with an AL, which is short for retinol dehyde. I will put this below. If you can pick up a product with that as the main retinoid, the whole big bucket, I think you will be very pleased to see better results, less irritation than a high retinol, OL, percentage or prescription retin-A. Are we thoroughly confused? I hope not. Um, I, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna, uh, I was going to use the analogy of diets, and I kind of got off track. But uh, 
I wanted you to understand the chain reaction that retinol palmitate needs to turn into retinol, and retinol needs to turn into retinal, and retinal then turns into retinoic acid. And the more steps it takes, the less effective it is, because with each step, it's, it's losing its energy. It just is. And it's kind of like a diet. Um, yes, you can just cut out bread. It's going to take longer to lose weight, but eventually you will lose weight. Now, if you cut out all carbs, you're going to do much better. Now, if you cut out carbs and start exercising, you're going to get to your diet goal a lot faster than someone who's just cutting out bread. That was kind of the analogy with all these levels of retinoids and how they kind of transform from one, one to the other to the other until it becomes retinoic acid, which is down at the cell level. And that's what retin-A is. It's retinoic acid. It's, it's, it's ready. It's ready to do its thing. I uh, hope this helped. Let me know if you have questions. As always, I will see you again next Tuesday, probably before. And if you could please remember to keep my husband and his medical team in your prayers. I would really, really appreciate it. Everything is on my Facebook page, Lulu B L U L U space B E A. It's a public page. We don't need to be friends. You don't need to be on Facebook. Um, but he's been diagnosed with a very rare and aggressive form of cancer. We just found this out. So thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.